In this section, we'll be talking all about building a REST API. This section is broken down into three pieces. In the first section, we'll be talking about how to use Django REST Framework, abbreviated DRF, to quickly scaffold out your API. In the second section, we'll dive more closely into how Django's class-based views can be used in combination with REST Framework. And in the third section, we'll talk all about authentication with Django REST Framework, using Django REST Framework to scaffold. In this video, we'll be talking all about how to install Django REST Framework, how to use Django REST Framework to quickly scaffold an API, and to try and understand what each of the individual components do. So now let's look at some code. The first thing we'll need to do is install Django REST Framework. This can be done by using the command pip install Django REST Framework. As you can see, mine is already installed. Next, you'll have to make sure that Django REST Framework is in the installed apps. You can do this with my site, settings, and then search for installed apps, and make sure REST underscore framework is one of the apps. Once this is done, we can start building our REST framework. We're going to continue using our polls application that we built in the last episode. So let's go in there and see what our directory looks like. As you can see, I've added a couple of new Python files, namely serializers.py, apiviews.py. Let's look at what those are. As you can see, our serializers.py file may look very familiar if you've ever worked with the Django admin framework before. All we're doing is importing the models, importing a serializer package from REST framework, and then creating two new classes, a choice serializer and a question serializer. Each of these two classes contain another class, meta, with a model field and a fields field. You may notice that the model field points to the model that we're using, and the fields field is a tuple of the different fields on the particular model that we're using. We're able to use such simple configuration for these serializers because we're using the model serializer class, or at least inheriting from it. This model serializer class provides all of the setup that we need for a basic serializer that allows us to turn a query set into some other form of data, and only requires that we pass in the model and the fields that we want to serialize. Django REST Framework provides multiple different serializers that we'll talk about later that require more configuration. Also notice that on our question serializer, we defined a new option, choice set, which points to our choice serializer, and set it to many equals true. This will allow us to look at the backwards relationship between questions and choices. This file contains a few imports, importing model and choice from our models file. It imports the view sets package from REST framework. And it imports our two new classes, question serializer and choice serializer from our serializers file. Inside of the API views, we define two new view sets, question view set, and choice view set. Each of these view sets inherit from view sets dot model view set. Model view set is kind of like the generic views that we used previously, except they're custom built for REST framework. All we have to do is pass in a query set that points to the query set that we're going to be using, and a serializer class that we're going to be using to convert the data. Now that we have both our view sets and our serializers set up, let's take a look at how we should hook those into our URLs. You can see inside of our URLs file, I've imported a new routers package from REST framework and imported our API views from our polls app directory. The first thing we need to do is set up a new router for REST framework. For this section, I'm going to use the routers.default router. The next thing we need to do is register our two new view sets with the router. This works similarly to using the URL patterns. Next, we add the Django REST Framework URLs to the sub-URL API. 
This means that when we navigate to slash API on our local server, we'll be served up URLs from the REST framework dot URLs package. Finally, to get our application to work with the new view sets, we include router.urls, which is the default router shown above, on the API URL as well. Normally this causes collisions in Django, but due to the way REST Framework's built, it won't cause any problems. So now let's take a look at our new REST API. If you navigate to localhost colon 8000 slash API, you'll get a nice looking browsable API. For the default home page or the root URL, Django REST Framework shows us what all choices are available for the API. In this case, question and choice, as those are the two view sets we set up. If we click on question, we'll be taken to that page. We're now provided with a JSON list of all of our current questions and the choices relating to them. We can also view this information as a straight JSON format by clicking the get arrow here and then choosing JSON. Lastly, Django REST Framework also provides some quick, easy post debugging information. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can actually send a post request directly to the API using a form provided here. You can also write it out directly as JSON if you'd prefer. To finish up this episode, let's learn a little bit more about what exactly serializers, view sets, and the router are, and how they're different from Django's built-in items. Firstly, if you need any more information about Django REST Framework, you can go to the official Django REST Framework website, django-rest-framework.org. There's a ton of documentation and an incredibly helpful community behind Django REST Framework. It's all easily accessible here. Next, let's look at the serializers. Serializers, put simply, is a way for Django REST Framework to convert your models, your query sets, or even non-query set data structures into a format that can be quickly and easily converted to other content or data types, such as JSON, XML, or even YAML. Django REST Framework has a bunch of information on serializers, all kinds of different types of serializers that you can use to build your applications. There's more than we could possibly go over in this short tutorial, but if you want to read up on more than we cover in this episode, Make sure to check out the website to learn more about serializers. Next are view sets. View sets work very similarly to the base view in Django's class based views. The main difference is the view sets do not provide a git, post, delete, and put method, but instead provide abstracted classes or abstracted methods such as list and create. This removes the routing portion for the user so you don't have to tell Django what HTTP actions will go to which set of logic. Django REST Framework does that for you. Just like with the serializers, there's a lot more information on this than we can cover in this episode. So make sure to check out the documentation if you want to learn more about that. And lastly, there's the router. The router doesn't have as much documentation as it's much similar to Django's routing URLs than the view set and serializers are to anything in Django. But Django REST Framework still provides extensive documentation on all of the different kinds of routers, as well as all of its different built-in functions. So make sure to check that out too. So in this section, we covered how to install Django REST Framework, how to use Django REST Framework to quickly scaffold out an API, and we tried to understand exactly what each of the individual components do.